Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this one is part of the AAS Education Series. And I am super happy to welcome back Tom Hockey. Hey, Tom. Hi, Frank. How, let's see, you're in Iowa, yes? I am. Uh, today, sunny Iowa, which is kind of neat considering what we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> do not equate sunny, however, with warm. I can tell that by your sweater. <laughs> <laughs> so is there is there snow in Iowa yet? We're December 13th. Oh, we we certainly have uh, we've had snow and uh, Good. the next one this time of year is only a matter of time. Very cool. Very cool. And Tom, what are we going to be doing today? Well, yeah, the sun. Of course, uh, 2024 is upon us and there'll be a lot of talk about the sun because of the total solar eclipse right through the middle of the country but uh of course astronomy teachers like ourselves uh in an intro course would talk about the sun obviously as an archetype uh, star every semester so uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about some things you can say about the sun uh, other than in eclipse. Cool. And uh, these particular demonstrations I wanna share with everybody uh, attempt to cover some points that I find students uh, find a little uh, confusing where there's a uh, um, okay. common misunderstanding or something like that. Perfect. Wonderful. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're going to go some demos today. Uh, and so I'm going to let uh, Tom take it away here. And um, here we go. Tom, all yours. Well, we're going to start in the middle. Uh, the obvious thing, where does the energy of the sun to run our solar system come from? Uh, those who know me and maybe others have already discovered that teaching astronomy is my excuse to play with toys at a more advanced age. And yeah. I have gone all the way back in time now. Uh, these pop beads are rated for six months to four years. Okay. But today they're not pop beads. They are particles in an atom. Okay. These colors represent protons in the nucleus, positively charged. And the, the problem is students have to kind of recall their elementary physics at this point. So I try to, uh, that's what I'm trying to remind them of. These cool. colors will represent neutrons with no charge at all. We're talking about what happens in the core of the sun, where okay. it's so hot that, of course, the electrons are off doing their own yep. thing. So a, yep. a nucleus might be a hydrogen. Plenty of that in the universe, plenty of that in the core of a star. We know it's hydrogen because it's got one proton most science classrooms that I'm aware of have a periodic table of the elements hung somewhere as this one does. Sometimes the numbering of the elements is even done in red. So that matches yes. up okay. Okay. nicely yes. there. Of okay. course, what you would think would be happening is that the two positive charges would repel each other. But of course, the, the pressure density inside the core of the sun, the temperature, they're moving fast. They overcome that and, in fact, fuse, Boom. overcoming that one to repel, and they uh, fuse together through the strong force. And we no longer have our two hydrogens. We've got, well, I have the students count them off one, two, one helium. There Which, as go. far as the pop beads are concerned, well, okay, that's that's it. 
but I point out that the rules are a little different in the realm of the extremely small. If I turn myself into a balance scale with okay. top beads, the okay. balance should now be the same. But of course, as we know, it, when we're talking about nuclei, it goes this way. Some of the mass has been lost in the process, not very much, uh, less than a percent, Converted. as if someone had come along and shaved a bit yeah. of the plastic off. I'm not actually going to do that to oh. my <laughs> pop bead there. Where did that go? Thanks to Mr. Albert Einstein, uh, pointed out that that mass is converted directly into energy to power the sun. Cool. Uh, astrophysicists are going to be howling at me at this point. Uh, <laughs> I uh, skipped major steps of the proton-proton chain. What's this was starting out good. with good. deuterium anyway, but that's not my, my point. My point right. is an, an introduction right. to the the very concept of nuclear fusion. Right, converting mass to energy, yes. And I can even uh, keep going. I can talk about uh, the old age of the sun when uh, the uh, core has obviously a lot of uh, helium in it, uh, heats up, and we can do the, there's my one, Two. Alpha particle, let's do another One more. alpha particle. You can see where I'm heading with right. this. Two. Let's fuse them together. Uh, okay. Get ourselves okay. some early mate. Helium. There's our early mate. <laughs> That's not going to work. That's not stable. But if we happen <laughs> to get three of them That's right. in a short enough time, again, right. have okay. the students counted up on the periodic table. One, two, three, four, five, six. Carbon, which we are certainly glad <laughs> is available in our solar system because that's the stuff we're largely made out of, cool. though I uh, can't guarantee that it's a ring like that. Uh, what, do, what, do those, what do those three helium particles go to? I'm sorry? What do those three helium particles go to? Uh, I've got enough in the pop bead set. That's that. That's as far as I can uh, I can go. This uh, pop bead set is is now considered vintage. The ones they make now are animals or fancy figures, which distract. Uh, but you can still get the old fashioned Fisher Price one, uh, eBay or or something like that, for less than uh, ten dollars. Cool. Nice. <clears throat> I like that one. We got both uh, PP and we got the uh, triple alpha going. Of course, that's just the beginning of the story, that energy produced in the core. This, I got to admit, beach towel. It's even got the sun on it. I mean, what luck. Uh, but that I uh, that was a you know a, a fortuitous goodwill uh, prowl, but uh, any circle of cloth will do for the following. Okay. This toy is a bumble ball uh -huh. made right here by the former Ertl Toy Company of Iowa. Uh, mm -hmm. Other companies have picked up the idea, though, and you can get them for about $25. Uh, if people are not familiar with them, I'll, I'll show you what it does. <laughs> but in our illustration, that's not a bumble ball. That is energy leaving the core of the sun. <laughs> it, it wandered it out. It's quickly <laughs> absorbed and re-radiated in a random direction. And again, and again, and again. So uh, the bumble ball illustrates the random walk that energy takes out of the sun. 
Okay. We never know quite when. Oh, almost. almost. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Went over the we cap of mountain. Quite when one particular. Oh, I like that. Is going to emerge. Mm -hmm. It's got lots of friends. Let's see, this time, eh, take it its time. Went, went backwards there for a while. And oh, yeah, <laughs> there, there we go. I love it. Very good. But eventually, of course, it gets far enough away. It takes a convention escalator uh, out to the photosphere. Kappa Mountain. Uh, the, the number I share with my students is 100,000 years mm -hmm. on average. So Airbus. that if somebody uh, magically clicked the switch on the sun, we wouldn't know for 100,000 years. But quickly pointing out that that will not happen. You know, uh, you think about it, we astronomy teachers are always coming up with ways uh, where there will be some, there could be some incredible catechism. That this cataclysm destroys everything that Oh yeah, yeah. You no know, Im impacts or supernovas or something. It's always nice to point out that something, uh, the sun, is is not it. That the sun uh, is going to be with us for uh, billions of years. Uh, I think to a point where we feel comfortable with. Good. Very cool. Very cool. And of course, this is a good time to mention that we should be glad that the energy takes a while to get out of the sun because it's formed as harmful gamma rays. We, we don't want any of that. Right. By the time it escapes and shines through our kitchen window, it's uh, at nice longer wavelength uh, radiated heat and light and the pretty yellow disc. Very nice. Very nice. Now, if it's not an eclipse, okay, what do you talk about that you can actually see on the sun with a properly filtered uh, telescope or, or something like that? Yes. Uh, as, as we all know, uh, about the only thing you end up talking about are sunspots. But of course, that is an important uh, subject. Uh, the ancients would have been appalled that the sun was not a perfect yellow sphere, that it had uh, occasionally these dark, uh, seemingly Mars or, or blemishes mm -hmm. on its surface. Of course, historically, sunspots have been useful to, for instance, determine the rotation rate of the sun. Cool. And for instance, not exactly the scale here, but if this sticker on a white cue ball is a sunspot, and okay. if that sunspot lasts long enough, you can see it. And then when it comes back to that particular position, uh -huh. you know, stop your stopwatch, and that's the rotation period of the sun. At that latitude which uh, because it's fluid is, yeah, varies. Not so with solid planets. I use a similar <laughs> It's a mountain. Illustration. It's uh, Olympus Mons there as we go around. Right, exactly, yes. Uh, and the problem with Venus, close by planet, ought to be able to figure out the rotation period at least pretty quickly. No, it is to the eye a featureless ball like the cue ball and you, even, you know, this cue yeah. ball here, yeah. pretty close by, it's hard to tell, if you couldn't see what my hand was doing, it's hard to tell how fast it's Spinning. turning around, never mind yeah. a planet or so. So uh, this comes up, yeah, talking about uh, the differential rotation of the sun, but also comes up in talking about uh, any case where rotation is involved, students sometimes confuse rotation with revolution. So here's a, an obvious case of something spinning that they're familiar with. And I found out you can buy, you don't have to buy the whole pool set. You can buy cue balls. single cue balls okay. at the 
sporting goods store. I don't know if that's a sport or not, but that's where I found mm -hmm. mine. I'm not quite sure why. I guess people are more likely to lose their flight cue ball, but it, yeah, I don't it's know perfect for mine. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Very nice. Very nice. I want to keep talking about sunspots okay. because uh, another misconception uh, about them, and, and they're great, right? Because they're the if you're teaching a daytime class, you can, it's the one thing in the sky you can take students in a filtered telescope out and actually look at, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the idea that they are places on the photosphere where energy is not coming out, which would be kind of strange. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I have here a small light bulb okay. connected to a battery yes the camera that we're using right now will not be our friend in this demonstration okay. uh you will not see what the students in the classroom will see but i i, I think you can see that you there is a, indeed a small unfrosted light bulb here with a glowing filament yes right? yes next to me is a device that I bet is collecting dust somewhere in every science building. It is a classic old uh, overhead projector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be careful, Frank. You don't want to show your age. Yeah. Oh, I'm already dated. A standard teaching <laughs> device once upon a time. I am using it just as a light source that I can project up for you. I'm taking the advantage of the fact that it has a hotter bulb than my uh, little light bulb here. In fact, uh, I don't know again about you through the camera, but you can actually tell that its light is uh, a little bit different color than the long one. So right now you're seeing both, but how about one superimposed over the other? So here we have the glowing filament, Okay. Let's project up the glowing filament. Oh, yeah. No. Now, what you are probably seeing is the whole light bulb disappearing, which looks kind of funny. But what we see in the classroom is the fixture and the light bulb in silhouette, even the filament of the small bulb. Yeah. But it does not appear to be glowing. It appears dark in contrast with right. the hotter light source behind it and of course as you will know if you could somehow dig out a sunspot from the sun and set it next to the sun against the black of space it would appear to glow but at 1500 degrees cooler uh, our eye brain has difficulty handling the contrast so on the photosphere they look black cool very nice I like to, uh, I like it when long about now, uh, a student will say, hey, wait a minute, what are sunspots anyway? Okay. It doesn't are... always happen, but, but sometimes uh, uh, happens. Sure. This one, of course, is tricky because it involves magnetic fields. B fields. The sun has a whopping magnetic field mm. but sure. human beings do not sense magnetic fields um yeah. so we teachers illustrate them with magnetic field lines drawings uh, which is a little bit abstract mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what i've taken to doing is is this this is uh, one of those exercise bands you can get ah. for a few dollars. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I attached a clamp as a handhold and a clip over here for, uh, for twisting. It's however anybody wants to, to do. Okay. Um, as you uh, pointed out earlier, a fluid like the sun rotation is differential. 
uh, plus we've got convection going on. These magnetic field lines get all twisted up. And what I'm going to do now is something everybody has done in an idle moment with a rubber band. It's the uh, original yeah. fidget device. <laughs> Indeed, an alternate would be to simply pass out to every student a rubber band and have them mm -hmm. do it themselves. But yes. as a demonstration, I like this because it's bigger. And of course, we know what will ultimately <laughs> happen. There it goes. Yeah. It will kink. The idea is that sunspots, which are intense centers of magnetism, tend, you know, tend to come as a pair, magnetic north and south, uh, are these kinks punching through uh, the photosphere. The nice thing is eventually in the uh, fluid sun, this twisting uh, sorts itself out. Those sunspots disappear, new ones form. And that releases a lot of energy when it doesn't. And, and this is a case where uh, my uh, Rube Goldberg tendency to want to make things too complicated comes into bear. When I was first thinking about this, I was thinking, okay, I need uh, something to some sort of something to hold the band and then I need something to twist it. So like an electric motor yeah. that I can somehow get in there and going around. And then I, I stop myself. Why? Yeah, <laughs> Why not just do it like anyone else would do it, like with the rubber band, except I had to find something that would make Big a rubber band. It would be larger for classroom demonstrations. I love it. Very cool. And I, I always yeah. like to point out that uh, typically I teach rather large sections. So uh, usually the, the bigger the demonstration, the physically, better. Mm -hmm. the, the better. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what I've got for cool. the sun. Uh, one way to learn and see more about the sun, of course, is during eclipse. And uh, on the 8th of April, I hope to be taking students to Illinois. It doesn't, fatality doesn't happen in Iowa, but it's close by. Yeah. Uh, to see uh, prominences and the, the corona and very all nice. that good stuff. Very nice. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And hopefully I will be in Texas somewhere near Centerline. Uh, as we go uh, through the eclipse, and it should be very cool. Well, cross your fingers for me. Yeah, um, on the weather, uh, because of logistics, right? school year uh, price, we, we can't go too too far. Just a, a day trip, not the part of the country best predicted to have clear weather. But hey, you know, it could happen. If it happens, it'll be great. It'll be an experience they will not forget. <laughs> Down. Very cool. Tom, that was really wonderful. I want to thank you so much for sharing these demos with us. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, I'll be uh, using them when we start up our semester for the, the spring term. As it happens, I usually end up talking about the sun uh, in April. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely wonderful. And there are some ideas that you can take for your own classroom demonstrations, should you want to. And Tom, thank you so much once again for these demos. And that will do, everyone. And I hope this made your Astronomy Education Day just a little bit better. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rick.